All right, now up on the board tonight, Matthew 24, and uh, we'll begin our reading at verse 12. Now, this will not be a prophetic Bible study. I am too busy to teach on Revelation. And uh, I, I'll just tell you simply, the Lord's coming and you better be ready. Now, I could go to great lengths and bring out all of the prophetic uh, prophecies that have come to pass. And I could spend an hour trying to convince you. But how many believe me? Well, and there's no use me spending an hour trying to convince you if you believe me. Oh, we're, we're in the same corner tonight. Praise God. Now, my theory is to drag as many out of the fires of hell and teach them to walk with God. I've got a big long chart on Revelation over there in my office. I've had it for about two years, and I've got 200 and some maps, little maps to pass out, and I've got four or five books, and, and uh, every time some of your beady little eyes see that chart, oh, they just light up, and mm, I can see you'll come to attention, and I, I just, oh, I know what's going on in, down in between your ears. I, I, I can read your mind. You want me to teach on Revelation, and I will not. Now, let me tell you something. When we get the whole city filled with the Holy Ghost, and every one of you are walking in divine perfection, then I'll teach on Revelation. Is that a deal? When we get the whole city prayed through, and every one of you are walking in divine perfection, then I'll get my revelation chart out, and honey, we'll have a time. But until then, mm, it's going to be the same old story. And if you don't shout when I preach Acts 2.38, you better shout when I preach heard it. I know you've heard it. I know you've heard it. But you're going to hear it again and again and again and again and again and again. And again. Mm. Oh, my. I, I, I'm feeling good. I, they, they had a real good ladies prayer meeting, prayed a couple of, couple of them through to the Holy Ghost. A couple of them got the Holy Ghost and ladies prayer meeting. And my, I, I believe I got the vacation spirit out of you. Ah, uh, Brother Smalley, I, I don't, I'm not going to preach to you now. You, you plug your ears. But folks, they, they plan a vacation for three months. They plan it. You can't get anything out of them for three months because they got their mind on six flags and, and their mind on worlds of fun and and then, then they're gone for two weeks, and then and when they get back, you're, you're three weeks getting it out of them. They got to tell you all about it. And whoa, that vacation spirit blows my mind. Huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, the Lord's probably going to come on vacation time. Oh, at least they're in church on vacation. Praise God. My, my, my. Now, uh, let's read a little bit. Matthew 24 and 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endureth, or in, shall endure, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached 
in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Now, let's talk about the end so we'll know what's coming. Verse 30, same chapter, same gospel, same Bible, same night. And sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to another. Now that's the end. That's the end. And uh, it said because... Iniquity shall abound. Brother Mona Smith preached Tuesday night in young people's service. We don't want to go back to 2 Timothy. Well, let's do for just a minute. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. And we're going to talk about that just a little while, just enough to convince you that you're in the last days. And uh, it said, because iniquity shall abound. Uh, That simply means because on every side of us there is such filth and crime and violence and drug addiction, people walking against every precept of God, God God-haters. The uh, gentleman was putting the glass back in our bus this afternoon. We had a little vandalism last night. Saturday night, we're not going to talk about it because most of those just want to see, uh, read about it in the paper, so we're not going to talk about it. We didn't report it. But I, I told the man putting the glass in, I said, you know, I, I, I grew up and I went out into the world and I'd done a lot of things that were against God. I didn't realize I was sinning against God. I thought I was just doing what I wanted to do. But deep within me there was an abiding fear of God. I would not lay my hands on a church, nor would I touch anyone. I remember staying in a in a rooming house in Omaha. And I, I, I won't talk about that rooming house. It was a it was a rough place. But there was a cleaning lady that came in every day or so and cleaned the rooming house. I never knew what she was. She was some type of holiness. But the rest of them laughed at her and ridiculed her and made fun of her. But I treated her with the utmost respect because deep down in my heart I feared God. But friend, we're living in the midst of a generation that does not fear God. They have absolutely no fear of God in their makeup. Oh, listen, read, woman, read. We're living in perilous times, dangerous times. This know also. Oh, this know also. That in the last days. In the last days. Perilous times shall come. Dangerous times. Oh, listen, hey, we're living in a dangerous time. Oh, I, 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 I could preach an hour. Hey, it's dangerous because there's false doctrine all around us. It's dangerous because there is a charismatic movement that is fooling a lot of people. My, my, my. How many knows what's going to judge us at the last day? It's not going to be what we believe. It's not going to be the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. But it's going to be that Word of God that judges us at the last day. These are dangerous times. 
You see folks talking in tongues, doing all kinds of ungodly things against God. Oh, I, I, I could go to Titus 2 and 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God. Hey, while we're waiting for the glorious appearing of the great God, we need to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Dangerous time. This this mic is it's biting me tonight, John. What's the matter? Am I am I in it too close? Mm. I wish you would. I'm going to fire you, boy. He's working part time on three jobs. Mm. Let's see. I believe that you got it. Oh, you're doing better, John. I might forgive you. After I pray, I'll forgive you. Is that all right if I forgive him after I... All right, after I pray, I'll forgive you, John. Read on, woman. Perilous time. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Oh, I'm not going. Lovers of their own... Oh, my. Go on. Hurry up. Hurry. Hey, we got some preachers. Oh, oh, uh, that, no, that's... Da oh, read on, wife. Pr hurry up. Quick, 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 quick. Covetous. Covetous. Oh. Boasters. Mm. Proud. My, my. Oh. Blasphemers. Proud. Covetous. Oh, I, I, I dare not dwell on any of this. Re read on. Disobedient to parents. Oh. I want you teenagers to stand up, all of you, every one of you. Living at home, you hear that? How many of you heard it? How many of you didn't? Huh? Uh, 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 oh, you, you can relax. I'm not going to get on your case. I, I just wanted to be sure you heard it. How many of you heard it? How many of you parents heard it? Uh, mm, come on, wife. I, I don't, don't let me get hung up on that. Unholy. Unholy. Oh. Unthankful. We have the gifts of the... Spirit. Oh, uh, we've been preaching the gifts of the Spirit for about 60 years. But we found out there's a little thing called separation from the world. That goes along with that. Ooh, get me, don't get me on, oh, don't get me on holiness. Uh, mm, oh, there, there's, a, there's a rotten doctrine in our midst that said you keep your spirit clean. I don't know whether you got any folks like that out yonder, brother. Smalley or not, I don't, oh, I, I don't, I suppose everybody out yonder is just sweet and kind, just, just like you folks are. You, you don't, you don't have that going, like we, oh, we got some things here. You, you wouldn't believe. You would not believe. Uh, but, but I, I know everybody back yonder is not like that. So you, th this is not, but, but there is a spirit going around that, uh, now, now, now years ago it came in a more, uh, 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 uh it, it was more of a confrontation and, it, you, you could do anything you wanted to do. Let your body do anything it wanted to do. But just keep your spirit holy. In other words, you can rob a bank with a 38. That's all right. But just keep your spirit right. In other words, smile at the man when you point the gun at him. Keep your spirit right. 
go go ahead and let your body do what it wants to, you know. You 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 could rob a man, you could do anything in the world, but but just keep your attitude and your spirit right. Now, it has come to us in a more subtle form. Let the body do what it wants to do, but keep your spirit right. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to toss to it. Know ye not that your body, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, wife. I, I, I'm just going to have to do a little bit of it, and then, then we're going on. We're going to start talking about enduring to the end. Read, woman. What? What? Know ye not that Don't your you body... Don't you know that your body... Is the temple of the Holy Ghost... Is the temple of the Holy Ghost... Which is in you... Mm, read on. Which ye have of God, you and ye are not your own. from God, and you're not your own... For ye are bought with a price. You're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. In your what? In your body. In your what? In your body. Glorify God in your body. Glorify God in your body. And in what? And, and in, in your, your spirit, spirit, which are God. Both of them belong to God. Yeah. Romans 12 and 1. Oh, therefore, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your spirit. Read it, woman. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Paul said, I'll get down on my knees and beg you, brethren. By the mercies of God. By the mercy of God. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. You present your body a living sacrifice. Holy. Holy. Acceptable. Acceptable unto, unto God, God, which is your reasonable it's service. It's just your reasonable service. Uh, I'm not going to Second Corinthians. Uh, I'm going to get off of Second Corinthians seven and one. Oh, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves of all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness. In the fear of God. Oh, I'm going to get off that body. God tells you what to do with your body. Oh, hey, listen. Some folks think that Peter quit preaching in Acts 2.38. Some folks think that Paul quit preaching in the 19th chapter of Acts. 1 Corinthians 14 and 37, wife. Let me just drop this in. in let, let, me, let me just drop. We're, 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 we got to go on. I, I, I got to get into this. But just let me talk. Go ahead. Read. If any man think himself to be a prophet. Hey, if you think you're a preacher. Or spiritual. Or if you think you're spiritual. Let him acknowledge that the things. You better acknowledge the things. That I write unto you. That Paul wrote to you in the epistles. Are the commandments are of the, the Lord. Are the commandments of God. You know, we get on the poor old denominal world. They, they get to preach in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And, and we ridicule them and make fun of them because they don't come in to Acts 2.38 and repent of their sin and be baptized in Jesus' name and get filled with the Holy Ghost. But hey, there's some things beyond Acts 2.38. They stop at John 3.16 and we stop at Acts 2.38. Oh, 
there's a wide, wide world out beyond Acts 2.38. Read on. Back to 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Disobedient unto parents. Without natural affection. Mm, throw their baby in a garbage can. Go get an abortion. Beat their children to death. Read on. Truth breakers. Ah, uh, you can't believe anyone. Read on. False accusers. Oh, read on. Incontinent. That means, that means fierce. Furious. Mm. Despisers of those that are good. Oh, they hate you because you're good. Read on. Traitors. Traitors. Heady. Heady. High-minded, lovers of pleasure, lovers of pleasure. Oh, Brother Mona Smith got on that Tuesday night. Lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. Hey, listen, some of us have just got a form of godliness. Let, 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 Let me hit this just one more, and I'm going on. I can remember Brother Hill back in the other church that I came out of when I was a boy. I can remember that old Methodist preacher preaching holiness. And the tears ran down his cheeks. And they still had a prayer altar in the Methodist church. And they still believed in separation from the world. And they still believed in holiness. And they had the power of God in their services. They'd hit the sawdust trail and fall out in the spirit and shout. But when they, when they lost their separation from the world, they lost their power with God. And when we lose our separation from the world, we're going to lose our power with God. God is no respecter of persons. Now let me get into this. Bible study. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We're surrounded by sin and ungodliness and filth. And uh, we have seen the love of a few wax cold. We have experienced that. But it said, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, let's talk about some things we're going to have to endure. Paul said, we're, we run in a race. He said, I fight not as one that beateth the air. Now, I, I'd hate to be in a race and not know which way I was running. You know, here's everybody on the starting line waiting for the starting gun. All of them crouched down facing west. And I'm facing east. Same starting line. But the race is going to go that way. And I'm in the crouch. And I'm waiting for the starting gun. The only difference is I'm headed the wrong direction. Now, if we're going to run in a race, we need to know which direction we're running. Oh, my, my, my. One, one fellow said, well, he said, all roads lead to Chicago. Hey, we're not going to Chicago. We're not on our way to Chicago. We're, uh, we're on our way to a more enduring city than Chicago is. My, my, my. I, I, I want to be running in the right direction. I, I want to be headed the right way. I want to be in the right church. My Lord, if I'm not in it, please get someone to tell me. I want someone to show me. I want someone to straighten me out. I've got to be saved. I don't care what it takes. I don't care. You show me. I'll do it. You show me in the Word of God. Hey, I'm not going to argue with you. I'll do it. I'm serious about this heaven business. How many of you are sick of this world? How many of you are tired of this world? Oh, sit down, sit down. 
Now, I'm serious about this heaven business. If you can just give me a little hint in the Word of God where something is just, it'll just a little bit questionable. I want to lay that thing, I want to get rid of, hey, I've got to make heaven. I've got to make it. But now, I want to know if I'm in the right church. Second Timothy 4 and 5. But 4 and what 4. Thou... Wait, 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 wait. 4 and 3, sweet thing. I'm, I'm For sorry. the time will come. Now, let's find out what we've got to endure. The time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine. When they will not endure sound doctrine. Oh, let me write that. I'm going to talk about some things we're going to have to endure. We're going to have to endure sound doctrine. Now, I'm not much of a planner. I just ran out of space. You forgive me, I, I read that sign once that said, plan ahead. Any ever, ever see that little sign that says, plan ahead? And, the, and he run off the edge of it. <laughs> it said, plan ahead. And he finished it up out here. That's the, way I, that's the way I am, I plan ahead. But endure sound doctrine. Let, let me tell you this. God sent 120, Luke 24, uh, 47, woman. God sent 120 back from the Mount of Olives. Now, the tour guide said right here is where his foot left the ground. You remember that, Brother Hill? Or was you there that time? No, you weren't there that time. It was the other time. But the tour guide said his foot left the ground right here. Oh, now I don't know whether you swallow that or not. I, I done pretty good till we got to where the tour guide said, and this is the sycamore tree that Zacchaeus came down out of. I said, what are you telling me, a 2,000-year-old sycamore tree? I don't believe they endure 2,000 years. I wouldn't even get out of the bus and go look at it. I said, that's as, that's as phony as a wooden watch. But the truth is, it's an indisputable, irrefutable, undeniable fact that Jesus led them out to Bethany and stood on the Mount of Olives and blessed them and ascended bodily up into heaven. And just before he went away, listen to this now. Read, woman. And that repentance and remission of sin. Oh, get down to verse 49. I'm sorry. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon I'm gonna you. I'm going to send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. But you go back to the city of Jerusalem. Until you be endued with power from oh, on high. Oh, and wait for that power from on high. Now, Jesus did not tell them they were going to start a church. He just gave them instructions. He said, you go back to Jerusalem and wait until you are endued with power from on high. Some of you, when you came to Fort Riley, God did not explicitly tell you He was going to put you in a wild, holy roller church. He didn't tell you that. God does not open up everything to us. He just tells you one step at a time. Something moved on you to go down to the recruiting office and sign your John Henry. And when you did that, you found yourself on some kind of a conveyance, airplane, automobile, train, gray dog, or I don't know what it was, headed for Fort Riley. 
and you did not know that someone was going to walk up to you and said, Hey, come out to church. We got a church out there. And that preacher is wild. Nobody told you that. You just walking along unconscious. Sort of like sort of like us black folks walk. Everybody can't walk like us black folks. They're just a certain something. And everybody don't preach like us black folks. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to quit clowning now. Hallelujah. I feel sorry for you pale face things. Hallelujah. But all of a sudden at Fort Riley, somebody walked up and handed you a little card. How many somebody walked up and handed you a little card? Ah, want me to tell you? Oh, you know what was on the card. And you came out. Now, your first impression was it was too noisy. Is that, uh, are you still with, how how many, your first impression it was too noisy. I'm reading you now. I'm reading you now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going through all of that, but. But you never dreamed that you were going to be as wild and as noisy as anybody else. You didn't, you didn't know that. And God did not say, now you go back to Jerusalem and start a church. He said, you just go back to Jerusalem and wait. And they got in that upper room and you all know the story. How many of you know the story? Oh, they were in there praying and worshiping God, and they were having the time of their life. Boy, I got to reading in Charles Parham's book. During camp meeting, we went down to that house on the corner of 4th and Jackson in Topeka. And uh, Charles Parham had a Bible college in that in 1898 before he moved out to the old stone folly where the Holy Ghost fell in 1901 and they begin to describe in Parham's book written in the 1910 or 13 or somewhere along in there it was written begin to describe and the other day I was in that place I was in that old brick house at the corner of 4th and Jackson. No, Parham was searching for something. At that time, he preached divine healing and living by faith. And spirit baptism, of course, he didn't realize what it was in its fullest. He preached it, the, the baptism of Holy Ghost and fire, but he didn't know that it came with talking in tongues found that out later on. But there they were in the upper room praying and worshiping God and all of a sudden you know the story. Acts chapter 2 verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all of the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to talk with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Now, that's the difference between us and the Charismatics. 
They learn how to talk in tongues, but we wait until the Spirit begins to do the talking. That, there, there is a little bit of difference there. We don't get down there and say, now repeat after me, tie my tie high. <laughs> we get all of the sin out of your life and get you cleaned up and get you baptized in Jesus' name and get you to praying and seeking God until God himself comes in and baptizes you with the Holy Ghost. But that's what happened to them. They come a staggering out of that upper room. You say, how do you know they were in the street? Because it said a multitude gathered and a multitude cannot get in an upper room. They went out into the street staggering and talking in tongues and the crowd said they're drunk. You ever see a drunk man? Anybody ever see a drunk? I'm not going to ask you, have you been? I'm not going to embarrass you. And such were some of you. Such were, were. Such were. It's none of your business what we were. But oh, look what we are. Oh, my, my, my. Now, the crowd said, what meaneth this? Some of them said they're drunk. Peter stood up and the first pope began to preach. My Lord, why go to Acts 2.38? Oh, I can feel it coming again. My, 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 my. Oh, the first pope. Peter, the first pope, stood up. If anybody else had a stood up, they would have been out of order. Because Peter had the keys to the kingdom. And Peter was about to open the door of salvation to the entire world. They cried out, men and brethren, what shall we do? What did Peter say, wife? Then Peter said unto them. Peter said unto them. Repent. Repent. And be baptized. And be baptized. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For, for the, the remission, remission of, of sins. sins. And ye shall and receive you shall. the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you shall. And you shall. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Ma, ma, ma. You shall. Mm. And a God, a God that cannot lie said, and you shall. Ooh. Ma, ma, ma. Now, I got to get off of that. Now, get down to about verse 40. Wife. Acts 2 and 40. And read for me. And with many other words. Now, many other words. Did he testify and exhort. Did he testify and exhort. Saying. Saying. Save yourselves. Save yourselves. From this untoward generation. Mm, read on. Then they that gladly received his word. They that gladly received the words of Peter. Were baptized. Were baptized. And the same day. Same day. There were added unto them about 3,000 souls. There were added about 3,000 souls to the church that day because they obeyed the preaching of Peter. Hey, listen, if you had to do that to get into the church back yonder, you've got to do it to get into the church today. There's only been one church. There never will be another church. There's only been one. There only is one. And there never will be any but one church. You've got to gladly receive the words of Peter to get into the church. Now read on, wife. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Now they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And fellowship. Wait a minute. The only sound doctrine is the apostles' doctrine. 
But it said some will not endure sound doctrine. They will not put up with the preaching of the apostles. Back to 2 Timothy 4 and 3. What will they do when they won't endure sound doctrine? For the time will come. Time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine. They will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust. Because they're, they've got lust living in them and they won't line up and they won't quit sinning. After their own lust. Shall they heap to themselves. They'll heap to themselves. Teachers having, teachers itching, having ears. itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. And be turned unto fairy stories and fables. And false doctrine. Now he that endureth to the end must endure sound doctrine. There is no sound doctrine but the apostles' doctrine. You've got to endure sound doctrine. No use running in a race unless you're headed the right direction. Now, we're going a little deeper into this. By the way, our air-conditioned man is here today, and he says about a week and we'll have more air-conditioned pouring in here. And let me say this while I'm, I'm coming back to our Bible study now. Let me say this. Uh, the city engineer was up here today. And I, uh, I asked him, I said, uh, have you been, did you get any phone calls? Oh, my Lord, yeah, he said. <laughs> he said, they said, we are losing all of our trees. Can you imagine the neighbor said, we are losing all of our trees. He said, I just simply told them that the trees were not theirs. That the trees belong to the church. Can you beat that? We are losing all of our trees. But we want to be sweet about it now. Praise God. The air condition is on the way. Now, we're going to have to endure some other things. Second Thessalonians 1 and 4. When you've got settled in the sound doctrine and you know what the apostles preached, when you've repented of your sin, you've been baptized in Jesus' name, you've been filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of talking in tongues, you know what the apostles believed and preached and taught, and you know what sound doctrine is, and you're going to continue in it until the end. There are some more things. Read, woman. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4, King James Bible. So that we ourselves so glory in you. We ourselves glory in you. In the churches of God. And the churches of God. For your patience. For your patience. And faith. And faith. In all your persecutions. Oh, persecutions. And tribulations that oh. ye endure. Oh, persecution. And what? And tribulations. And tribulation that you what? That ye endure. That you endure. My Lord have mercy. You mean after I have endured sound doctrine, I've got to endure some persecution. And some tribulation. Well, let's look into this a little bit. Second Timothy 3 and 12. Wife. All, Yea, and all that will live godly. And all that will live godly. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Shall suffer persecution. Shall suffer persecution. 
<sighs> you mean if I'm living godly, I'm going to... Yeah, read that again, wife. And all that will and live wait, now, godly... Now, slowly, and all... Isn't that rather inclusive? And all that shall what? Live godly. Live godly. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Oh, there we are with that godly living. Westberg, stay off of that. And all that will. If you're going to live godly, let me, let me tell you how it starts. Now, Laodicea did not arrive at her destination overnight. I was talking to Brother Wild today. He's not wild. That's just his name. He's wilder than she is, though. And you ought to see the wild child. That's Daddy O and the wild child. Oh, stop being silly, Westberg. I said, Laodicea, now you listen to me. Laodicea did not happen overnight. A little slumbering, a little folding of the hands. I told Brother Wild, you, in the winter time, you fight the elements. You got to preach to get people to get out in the snow and the ice and come to church anyhow. Then the weather turns nice. Here comes Easter weekend. You get them through Easter weekend. Here comes Memorial Day weekend. You get them out of Memorial Day weekend and here comes the 4th of July. And you get them through that, and here comes Labor Day. Then here comes the holiday season when everybody's mind is on Thanksgiving and ha Hallow. My God, don't make me say that ugly word. Let's jump over that and get to Thanksgiving. Aren't you thankful I didn't get on that? I mean, yeah, you're thankful. I know you are. Then here comes Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's, and by that time, the winter set in again. There is something that is constantly trying to turn you away from the house of God. And the burden of the house of God. Hey, Brother Smiley, I'm not a proselyter. I'll, I'll, I'll preach to you and send you back home on fire. <laughs> Praise God. I like to pray my own children through. They know the sound of my voice. Hello. Hello. How many of you got the Holy Ghost here? Stand up. Hallelujah. Sit down. Ah, and I've shipped a thousand of them off. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But Laodicea did not arrive there all of a sudden. A little letting down, a little getting in the rut, a little backing off. 
a little let George do it. Oh, some of you smile. Well, we're down below 500 now. We're going to climb back above it. But when we do, when we do, some of you say, well, bless God, hallelujah, we had 500. What do you mean, we? You ain't done nothing but read the number on the board. That's all you've done. Where you get that wee stuff? You got a mouse in your pocket? What did you do? Mm. How many wants me to get back to my Bible? I'll get back to my Bible study. We didn't even pass the offering pan, so we're not going to pass it again. That's all the same price. Persecution and tribulation. Now, all that live godly in Christ Jesus are going to suffer persecution. Romans 5 and 3, woman, read, read emphatically. Read, uh, read, read with that certain throb in your voice. Read, 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 read emphatically. Just, just, just read it with all of the, with all of the charisma that you are capable of, dear. Mm-hmm. Read. Did you lose your place? <laughs> Hallelujah. She's and still smiling. And not only so. What? And not only so. And not only so. But we glory. What we glory in tribulation what? also. What are you kidding? Do you think I'm going to glory in tribulation? You must be out of your mind. You must have flipped your cookies, friend. What me glory in tribulation? Read on, woman. Knowing that tribulation worketh oh, patience. Tribulation worketh some things in you if you'll endure it. But the trouble is you run in there and you get on your knees and you turn the waterworks on and you say, Oh God, I didn't know you were going to do this to me, God. it out. Let's have a pity party. <laughs> oh, I didn't know it was going to turn out like this. <laughs> but that tribulation is working patience in you. On, woman, hurry, hurry, and hurry. Patience, experience, mm, and experience, on. hope. Hope. And hopeth make, maketh not a shame. Oh, read on. Because the love of God oh. is shed abroad in our hearts mm. by the Holy Ghost, mm. which is given unto us. Oh, my, my, my. Now, my Lord, have mercy. We, 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 we better get off of that persecution now. Mm, and, and tribulation. Now, tribulation simply means troubles and trials and, and tests. You know, let, let, let me put it to you this way. If you could see the glory world while you're going through it. Now, all, all you can see is the valley. You're like a punch drunk fighter. You ever see a man come out of his corner punch drunk? Your your head is reeling. You 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 you've been you're you're out on your feet. 
You're, you're just fighting with reflexes. Let's don't talk about reflexes. <sighs> Hallelujah. Now, tribulation, and, and, and you're in the valley and you're in the fight, and my Lord, you don't know, you don't even know, you, 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 you don't even know where you is. I know it's grammatically correct to say you don't know where you are. But you just don't really know where you is. And about that time, about that time, there's some angels over there. Now, I, I, I don't believe angels are gamblers. I don't believe that. But if they were, there's a bunch of those not black oh, Why do they always have the bad ones? Why? I don't know, but let's say angels of darkness. Does that sound better? Yeah, that sound better. Hell yeah, that sound better. There, there's the bad bunch over there. And oh, they, they, if they were allowed to bet, they'd be laying 20 to 1. You don't make it. But over here on the other side, there's another section up in the bleachers are cheering you on. saying he's gonna make it he's gonna make it he's gonna make it he's gonna make it oh, he's gonna make it my lord have mercy oh my 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 mm -hmm. now, now let, let, let me tell you what tribulation will do for you Tribulation will build your faith. When you whip a little devil, it'll give you the faith to whip a big one. Oh. And, and, and when you whip two of them, you say, run a dozen by me. Oh. My, my, my. Hallelujah. Oh, if we could just part that celestial curtain and look up into the glory world. Oh, just about the time. Get up here, Brother Alabarossin. Come on, come on. Get up here. Now, now start staggering along here. You just, just, just about the time. He, he, see, you're, you're staggering along, and you don't know where you're going. You're, 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 you're wiped out. You're, you're just on your feet. And an angel will get down and get you by the arm and pull you. Say, get out of it, boy! Hey, listen to me now! Oh! Angels are interested in us! Hey, we're God's inheritance! The angelic world is interested in you! My, my, my. Oh, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Mm -hmm. We got to finish this dead, dull, dry, boring Bible study. You're not helping me. You're in a you 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 you. No cooperation in this place at all. Except, except my Rita. I got a sweet Rita. How many believe? You know? My my my. The only person that knows what they're doing is the reader. Persecution. Tribulation. Oh, wife, get, get, get Romans 8. My Lord, I, I gotta get Romans 8 and then we, we gotta go on. 
But, but let, let's, let's get Romans 8 before we, 835. Mm, my, my, my. Romans 8. Come on. Come Who on. shall separate us from oh. the love of Christ? Who's going to separate us from the love of Christ? Who's going to do that? Mm. Read on, woman. Shall tribulation. Shall tribulation. Our distress. What? Our distress. Oh, shall tribulation or distress our, separate us from the love of God? Our persecution. Shall persecution separate us from the love of God? Ah, uh, is Sister Rivera here? Yes. Is Sister Walker here? Yes. What happened? Ah, oh, tell me after church. Ah, I can tell you what happened. Um, did you do it? Both of you? Did both of you? Do it? Oh, oh, just. Um, my, my, my. You, you dudes don't know, some of you dudes, you don't know what persecution and stand up, Sister Fields. Stand up, Sister Fields, all, all four foot nine. Ah, stand up, Sister Lucky, Sister Shockley turned lucky. Are you working? Ah, how many more you got kicked out of the United States Army because you wouldn't wear them fatigues? Stand up. How many more? Mm. Oh, you ought to see the ones that are gone. Mm, Sister Winters, Colonel, Colonel Bowman called me and pled with me on, oh, he said, oh, he said that's the best soldier I've got. Preacher, he said, Reverend, that's the best soldier I've got. And I said, you ain't going to have her much longer. <laughs> oh, hey, listen, I, I ought to tell some of you weak things, uh, some of you that's on the mill. I ought to tell you about Willie. You want me to tell you about Willie? Four Colonel Chaplains and one from personnel called me to Fort Riley. They said this Willie, was it Johnson? Mm. They said, now, Willie carries his Bible on formation. And Willie will not pull off his fatigue shirt to do calisthenics in front of the ladies. And Willie prays too loud in the barracks. Can you feature that Willie praying too loud in the barracks? And I sat there and they interrogated Willie. They said, Willie, is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they said, Reverend, would you like to say something? I said, I certainly would. <laughs> mm. I said, Chaplain Redding, turn to Acts 2 and 4 and read for me. He was a Southern Baptist. Can you imagine? I had a Southern Baptist reader, a colonel, a chaplain colonel, Southern Baptist reader, reading Acts 2 and 4 while I preached spirit baptism and a talking in tongues. Oh, I said, now, chaplain, gentlemen, I said, gentlemen. That may or may not have been correct. If it was not correct, forgive me, God. Said, so we don't have 
problems with our, uh, with our members uh, drinking alcohol and committing adultery and running wild. But when they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they're flying at such a high altitude that it is difficult to bring them down to where they can associate with common people. My Lord have mercy. said, is there any A.R. against carrying your Bible? There's no A.R. against carrying your Bible. The army issues them to you. The army issues them to you. There's no regulation against carrying your Bible. Then we got into that. And I said, now, gentlemen, get you a decimeter and measure the decibels of sound coming out of all of those rock stereos blaring that rock music all night long in the barracks. You get you a decimeter and measure the decibels of sound coming out of those stereos and measure the decibels of sound that's coming from Willie's praying and you tell me which one is the loudest. I said if you got a man that will kneel down in an atmosphere like that with pornography all over the walls and cooler cans of popping and marijuana so smoke so thick you can't hardly breathe and you got a man that will get down in an atmosphere like that and begin to pray, you ought to give him the Congressional Medal of Honor! My Lord have mercy. Brother Anderson, are you here? Stand up. That was my eighth court martial. We came through it fine. He got out yesterday. Oh, some of you don't know what persecution is. Some of you don't know what tribulation is. Some of you don't know what resisting the devil really is. Some of you don't know what a fight really is. But hey, you're going to stand in a judgment with men and women that have fought the good fight of faith and they have stood against the powers of hell. Ah, tribulation, persecution. Stand up, Brother Smith. David, Smith Brothers. I remember visiting him down in Forsyth in the correctional facility, full pack field gear on, marching. How long ago that been, Brother Smith? About three and a half years. I'm talking about persecution. Somebody call you Holy Roller and you, oh, my God, I'm being persecuted. Uh, Somebody call you Holy Roller say, thank you, sir. Somebody call you a fanatic say, thank you, sir. Mm. Well, I got to get off. We got some more. Th- oh, my Lord, it's nine o'clock and we have not endured yet. Second Timothy 2 and 3, wife, just, just a minute now. I'm going to wind it up in just a minute. Now, I'm just trying Thou to... Thou therefore endure hardness... Endure hardness... As a good soldier... Oh, you silly, Jesus soft... You soft, you pitiful... Mm. 
You're going to have to endure hardness. And let me tell you something. We got some folks in management around here. Brother Shiflett, you here tonight or you down here? Is he in Harrington? While I'm on that, I want to open up your mind to some things. Brother Shiflett and Brother Wild, Brother Wild's manager of Burger King, some of you work for him. Brother Shiflett is manager of the Vickers station, and some of you work for him. Now, let me tell you something. That brotherly, my brother stuff ends on the job. I've told both of them, if you don't work, fire your lazy hide. How you like them apples? Now, let me tell you something else. Brother Lindley, is he working? My Lord, everybody's working. Half the church is working. My Lord, everybody's gone. Hmm. If Brother Shiflett, manager of Vickers, Peralta, you're here. I'll pick on you. Stand up, Peralta. Now, Brother Shiflett is manager of Vickers, right? You work for him, right? And he said, Peralta, I want you to pour gas. I want you to watch them pumps. Don't you let anybody drive off that lot without paying. You sit there and watch them pumps. That's what I'm paying you for. So Peralta looks out in the grass. Looks kind of high. And he said, well, I work here. and I believe I'll just get the lawnmower. That grass needs to be cut. And I'll crank up the lawnmower and cut grass. And Peralta is out there working like a dog and the sweat running down in his eyes, pushing that lawnmower, working twice as hard as what he had been told to do. But how many of you know what's happening? The man told him to watch the pumps. Now you do what you're told. And if the man comes to you and said, you're getting lazy, boy, straighten yourself out, you better sure enough do it. Or you're going to be driving that blue automobile down the road with a sad look on your face. Huh? Hey, that brother stuff ends when we walk out the door if he works for you. I'm going to give you a little story. A boy was drowning. A man leaped in and pulled him out. Saved his life. Fifteen years later, the boy got committed a horrible crime and walked in the courtroom and looked up there on the bench and there sat the man that pulled him out of the river. Oh, he said, I got it made. The judge sentenced him to life. He said, wait a minute, judge. He said, don't you remember me? The judge said, yeah, I remember you. He said, you're the one that pulled me out of the river. He said, I know. He said, back then I was your savior. But now I'm your judge. In here we're brothers. On the job, you got a boss. And I'm going to say something else while I'm still mad. You, you want me to say it while I'm still mad? Oh, I better look up when I say this. If I was a man... 
And I had a wife working and bringing in a paycheck. Oh my God, I better turn my back. And I wasn't working. You know what I'd do? I'd get me some white mule gloves. And I'd get me a shovel. And I'd walk the streets every day looking for a ditch to dig. Because... The Bible said, let him that don't work not eat. Now, if there's any... Oh my God, let me look up again. If there's any of you ladies working on a job and your husband is not, next time he shoves his fat belly up against that table, say, what are you doing here, Doc? What are you doing here? How many of you still love me? How many of you don't? Ah, oh, there's a hypocrite or two out there, I'm sure. I'm not, you know what it said? Said, let him that don't work not eat. I'm not, I'm not going to, I, I want to talk a little bit more about enduring. Now, we got to endure hardness. Hey, snatch and get it, man. Some girl breaks up with some old boy. Boo hoo hoo hoo, she done me wrong. <laughs> She probably done you right. That's better than being unhappy for 30 years. She probably done you a favor. Some old boy drops, oh, he broke off with me. You ought to thank God. (laughs) You might have to support the lazy thing. Ah, my God, let's get back to this. Hebrews 12 and 7. Oh, listen, we got to endure affliction. Now, afflictions means pain, distress, grief, sickness, sorrow. Mm. I, I, I didn't even have time to get into afflictions. That's 2 Timothy 4 and 5. Hebrews 12 and 7. Give me, oh, give me that one, wife. Come on. Ooh, I got it. If ye endure chastening. You're going to have to endure chastening. God dealeth with you as with sons. You better find you some old boy that has the intestinal fortitude to point, I'm going to pick out one that's doing fine. This boy is doing fine. But you better find you someone that will stick his finger up under your nose and say, you need to get yourself straightened out. You're going to have to endure what? Chastening. Chastening. Mm, mm, mm. My Lord, aren't you glad we're about out of time? Aren't you glad we're about out of time? Endure chastening. Read on, woman. God dealeth with you as with sons. If God whoops you. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Oh, if... If God's a-whipping you, that means you're a son. Hey, I, I never have whooped the neighbor's children. I, I felt like it a time or two. We don't, God don't whoop the neighbor's children, but oh, my Lord have mercy. 
Now, if he don't whoop you, read on, wife. But if you be without chastisement, if God doesn't whip you, whereof all are partakers, mm, then are ye bastards and not sons. Oh, you're probably not even a son of God if he's not whooping you a little bit. Oh, endure hardness, endure afflictions, endure chastening. Endure persecution, endure tribulation. Now, to endure, listen to this. To endure means to hold out against without yielding. Endure means to suffer without yielding. To endure means to abide, to remain, to persist, to continue, and to overcome. Oh, he that overcometh, overcometh in the name of the... Mm. I ought to get to Revelation. And he that overcometh. And he that overcometh. Let me, let me tell you, set that blackboard down. We're gonna, we're gonna quit. I'm not, I'm not through. I, I didn't get it. Oh, there's, there's more, there's more. Some of you strong. Boy, when I said that, mm. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, when I said strong, ah, Gabriel Rivera, ooh, that boy's powerful. He took the civil service test for the post office. Scored the highest score anyone's ever scored in this city yet. I still believe there was some hanky panky. They said he had a traffic ticket. Mm. Gabriel Rivera. Ooh, but you're working, aren't you? Praise God. Now, to me, there's, there's a lot of... Fa Webster has a lot of words for endure. But to me, it's this. It does not matter what the devil hits you with. Doesn't make a bit of difference. You ever, you ever watch men in the ring much? Now he's not in there to put on a show. You know that boy that's out there, you know, jabbing, you know, all that fancy footwork. He's putting you on a show. But, that old boy that fights rough and tumble. He don't care what he's got to get a hold of. He don't care. He's got one thing in his mind. He's fixing to put you on the ground. If it takes a club, he'll go get it. Don't make a bit of difference. Whatever it takes, he's going to get it because he's going to put you on the ground. Friend, I'm going to put the devil on the ground. And I don't care what it takes. They, they can say, oh, you don't need to do this. 
No, that's not necessary. I don't care whether it is or whether it's not. I've got one object in my mind. I'm going to put the devil on the ground. I'm going to fight this thing on out to the end. Of, I'm going to endure. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to endure to the end. Devil, do you hear me tonight? I'm going to endure to the end. My, my, my. Praise God. Wife, if you don't make it, I'm still going to make it. Well, I believe she's going to make it. She's, she's helping me. But if she don't, I'm going to make it, Brother Carrier. I'm going to make it. Praise God. Who? Oh, my, my, my. I got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up brother and sister Bibbs have a eight pound baby girl said both what do you mean both all three of them are doing fine I wonder why it is you always leave the father out like like he, he doesn't matter my, listen, I went through, oh my, I, I ought to tell you what I went through. All three of them are doing fine. 